Hey you, stay tuned to the end of this video to find who won the book giveaways. I was gonna film outside, but it seems a little bit windy. Don't spill the tea. Yeah, definitely spilled it, oh well. Let's just set you on the coffee maker there. That looks stable. You guys, um, I got recasted for a new prosthetic leg. Oh my god, I might actually be able to walk again. I think for a while there I was feeling like I would literally never walk without crutches ever again in my life, but now I feel like I can kind of see the light. Also, yet again, because I said this in the other video where I went to the prosthetics office, I did not think this would happen so soon. I didn't think it would happen so soon. I went up to Denver on Monday and met with a new prosthetist who is just lovely. He's just a lovely human. Zach, you're delightful and I'm really glad you're my prosthetist. Glenn, you're all right too. So I went up there really hesitant. If you followed kind of this whole journey, you know that I got a little, a little scared for a while there. Not gonna lie, I still am a little bit, but um, I just felt like there was so much contradicting information with my leg being too long, my leg not being too long. Like this was the right prosthetic, this was the wrong prosthetic. Like there was a lot of back and forth from, from different sorts of people. My leg is not too long. This is a third prosthetist that agrees it is okay. But when I went up there, I was definitely feeling kind of reserved. Like let's just talk today. Let's not actually do anything. But as we got kind of further into it, it became clear that we really could go ahead and cast it. And so we did. So here is Monday. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna roll the footage. I, too much camera shake, I know. I'm headed up to Denver all by myself. Uh, answering the question that some of you had, yes, I can drive. I just don't drive for a few weeks after surgery because of the meds I'm on, because of how anesthesia affects me, and because I'm just not super comfortable doing it. But I'm good now. I'm headed up to Denver to meet with my new prosthetics guy and to get that process started. I'm not actually sure what we'll do today because I'm still a little too close to surgery to like do the recasting, but we're gonna get started. I'm gonna talk to him, um, ask some hard questions, and kind of go from there. So you, me, and, oh, Christopher Walken, are gonna take a field trip. Let me just get a tall vanilla latte and some water. So I am like 20 minutes late because I couldn't find parking and now I'm supposed to walk in that door in like the basement of a uh, creepy parking garage. We'll see if I survive. My leg fell apart in the parking lot. This looks normal, totally, totally normal. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. So if you saw the other video, I'll pop it up here on the screen of my other prosthetics casting day. It was really different. So they used like this giant balloon the first time and did all different kinds of stuff. But this time it, they just like wrapped it up in, in plaster and saran wrap and different stuff. So it was really interesting. I didn't realize that there were different ways to get casting done. I'm not sure how, but I managed to find my car. This parking garage is like, like it might be an alternate universe. Well, I got recasted for a new prosthetic. Apprehensively excited um, would be the best way to describe what I'm feeling. I hope that it works. I hope I can walk soon and I will work as hard as I can safely to do so. I talked to my new prosthetist about going back to jujitsu and um, you know, it's been six months now and he thinks that it might be as tolerated. Like I might be able to start drilling and going back to some classes. It'll be a while before I can actually, before like sensation wise, I'll be okay to do so. And I want to take things as slowly, as slowly and safely as possible because I can't, I don't want to have anything else happen. I don't, just don't want to have anything else happen. But, oh my God, if I could roll again, which is what going live in jiu-jitsu was called, if I could, that, I feel like I would just so feel like myself again. It's always been a point where I actually feel like myself, like on the mats, everything else disappears, like all the anxiety, all the just crap in my head melts away for a little while, you know? And there's not been a lot of moments in the last couple months where I've been able to just sit and feel like myself, but on the mats I do. I know it'll be an adjustment going back because I'll be missing a leg now, and so how I do jujitsu will be very different. But oh my God, I can't wait to figure that out. I can't wait to learn, and I'll have to make a decision about when I go back because I want to take it really carefully. But I could actually be going back 
sometime soon. Moving forward, next week I will be coming in to get the check socket done. So they took the measurements today, they casted it, and then next week I will be able to come in and kind of test out what they have built. It's kind of like this big plastic looking leg. It's what I had the first time as well, but we're gonna take a little slower, have a few more check sockets first before moving on to any kind of final leg. I really wanna take this process slowly. I've said slowly a lot. I'm a little gun shy of everything. I'm ready to work, but I don't want to mess anything up if that makes sense. Slow and steady, and next week it begins. Jiu-Jitsu is like air to me. I'm not one of those people who's like obsessed with it every second of the day when I'm not on the mats, but when I'm on the mats, it is who I am. I love it. I actually used to compete in it years ago, very briefly, I won a medal. It was a bronze medal in like the beginner's division at state, but whatever. It's still a medal. The idea that I could actually get back to it sometime soon makes me wanna like sob and simultaneously like robs me of all emotion. I don't wanna let myself get excited about it, if that makes sense. So I'm not trying to set any time frames or deadlines. I wanna take everything really slowly. My leg still hurts just post-surgery to touch and in jujitsu, there's a lot of pressure put on basically every part of your body all the time. So if I did go back, I'd probably just go back and like drill lightly with people. And I'll stop talking about this, the details, because it's probably not interesting to anyone who doesn't do jujitsu, but just know that I am really, really excited and really hopeful. And I will absolutely bring you guys along because that's like, I feel like I've been able to introduce you guys to different sides of me throughout this journey, but I cannot wait. I cannot wait to introduce you to like active Joe because I love doing stuff. Like I love, rock climbing and I love jiu-jitsu and I love horseback riding and I love being outside and I love hiking and walking my dogs is like my favorite thing in the entire world almost. Love dancing, suck at it, just terrible at it, but I love dancing and God, I cannot wait for you guys to be a part of it because you guys have been a part of like so much of this. So I'm gonna stop gushing now. So next week I'm going up to get fitted for like the, the the check socket, which is basically a test leg. Internally, I'm like in a rush to walk, but it's really important to me that things are done right and that we don't have any more problems come up if it can be avoided. So slow and steady wins the race, like we were all taught in elementary school. And yeah, maybe I'll be standing in a leg next week, we'll see, to be determined. I also got new shrinkers and liners, which was exciting because my leg has gotten so much smaller again. That is great news because it means that things are gonna fit better for longer. Like it's not gonna shrink so fast. Good news all around. Also, side note, that parking garage was like the death of me. It, it took me 20 minutes to like find a parking spot and like, I might die down here. Another like 10 to get out of it and then like 15 to find my car. If you see this video, it means I've made it out of this parking garage. <laughs> Maybe I'm just efficient when it comes to parking in parking garages. If anyone has ever parked in the underground garage at St. Francis Penrose Hospital in Denver, tell me I'm not alone. It's confusing. Moving on now. Anyways, I will talk to you guys in the next video. I love you, I'm thinking about you, and I'll see you soon. Wait, 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 before I roll that credit music, let's go into who won the book giveaway. So a couple days ago, I released a video talking about the Sackler family and the opioid crisis and Purdue Pharma, and you guys were awesome to let me kind of branch out and do a different kind of video, and the response was, was really awesome, so I appreciate that. And as part of that video, I wanted to do a book giveaway of two super influential books on my life. The first one was American Pain, and the second one was Chasing the Scream. So, uh, there are two winners, because there are two books, did a random picking, and our winners are, drum roll please. The first winner for American Pain is Annalisa Morales, and Sue Harris won Chasing the Scream. Like I said before, either of those books are just fantastic. I would recommend them to anyone. They're really good read, like they tell a really good story and also a really important one, so I'll put links to the description down below if you're interested in checking them out. Thanks for sticking around. Thank you for everyone who entered the giveaway and who commented on that video. I really appreciate it, guys. Bye.